Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video we're going to continue building on the multiplayer shooter game. Now, last time we synchronized the changing of weapons and picking up of weapons, so that works in multiplayer, and so we can see that. And in this video I think we should handle the shooting and the damaging, so let's just get right into that now. First things first, our player needs to be able to take damage, so let's make a new component that's called player health, and I'm going to just throw that onto the player prefab as well. And let's enter this, and let's just immediately make a new serialized field private integer that i'm just going to call max health i'm going to set that equals to 100 and then we can make a private integer that's going to be our current health now this needs to be a network behavior as well and as soon as the player starts on start network oh sorry actually let's do on start client on start client we're going to say the current health is equal to the max health. and we're also going to just if we are not the owner we're going to say enabled equals to false and we return out there we go now this component is disabled as well now the thing is we most likely want all of this to actually be controlled on the server so instead of doing this actually we could just say if we're not the server we disable it or whatever but the thing is we just want the server to handle everything so it doesn't really matter all of this so let's actually just set the player health in awake i just realized just to make sure that it is always set in the beginning and now we can make a server rpc with the require ownership of false and we can just call this one private void take damage and this will need to take in some kind of integer of damage and the server will then say that the current health is deducted from the damage or by the damage damage is deducted or subtracted from the current health and now we can also then say if the current health goes below or equals to zero we would need to die somehow so make a private method that we're just going to call die and we can call that up here there we go and now the player is going to die up here so we can say debug.log player is dead and up here we can just say uh, debug.log new player health and we set in the current so this should all be debugged on the server when they take damage so this should now work it's very basic and we're of course going to fletch it out a bit in the future but for now let's look into how we handle the shooting this was just so we have some way of actually seeing that we take damage and can actually hit now it's different how you want to handle shooting whether you want to do that with physical bullets or you want to do that with ray casting i'm just going to go with ray casting it's much easier to get working now one thing that's important to mention and i think i've mentioned this in the video before but there's a big difference between what type of movement and control scheme that you choose to use for your multiplayer game now the most advanced and most common setup for competitive games would be client side prediction the thing is in this video we're not doing client side prediction because that requires a whole different setup for the movement and setup of player and it's it's a lot more advanced and it's something i'll cover in a future video but I see no point in covering it right now because it's constantly changing and I have no point in making a video that's going to be deprecated in a month. So I'd much rather wait. Now, what we need to handle here is we need to go into the weapon, which would be a player weapon here. We can see we have the fire command and let's just go into, let's say, the pistol first of all. And we've got to figure out how do we actually handle the firing. Now, another thing we also want on the player weapon is we most likely also want some kind of damage. So let's do a just a public integer that's going to be damage. And now on the player pistol here, what we can do is we can fire off a ray cast that'll run the damage. So we can do... Now, actually, I just realized that maybe we don't want to actually abstract fire. And I'll show you why in a little bit. Because firing, since we want to use ray casting, is going to be the same for every single weapon. So what we'd instead do is we'll have a public actually let's do a private abstract void animate weapon and that's going to be an abstract one i'll show you that needs to be public and what we're going to call animate weapon here so that way we can animate them individually what we also want to happen is we want the firing now to handle the ray casting and the dealing of damage so let's just go if physics.raycast and now we need to know what to raycast from the way that we do this is first of all this should now be animate weapon like so and this needs to be in the shotgun and the player rifle as well so now these are individually going to animate but they're not individually actually going to handle the shooting because that's going to be done with ray casting in just the a player weapon class so in here we also want a public layer mask which will just be the enemy player layer and we also want a reference to the camera all of that's just the camera transform like so and we can just get that in a way so the underscore camera transform equals to camera dot main dot and so now we can use the camera transform dot position and the camera transform dot forward and we can output a ray cast hit that we're going to call hit and then we're going to and this should actually not be the enemy player layer this should just be weapon hit layers which means we also want to be able to hit walls and the ground and such so this is going to be mathf.infinity because we don't want a max range on the weapon you could set this but for my sake i don't see a point weapon hit layers actually maybe we do want a max range because we have a shotgun so let's make a public float max range and at some point we also of course want a fire rate to ensure how fast we can shoot so the max range will be down here and let me just set this off 
just default to let's say 20 and we can just say if we do not hit anything we return this means that if we're down here we've hit something and what we can now do is we can say if the hit.transform.try get component gets the player health script and we're just going to call it health then it means that we've hit another player this now means that we can call the health dot take wasn't take damage let me just check Oh, that's because I've made it private. It needs to be public like that. And then here we can call the health.take damage and we can throw in the damage variable. And now we should be damaging the other player that we hit. Now this technically means that we can fire as quickly as we want. There's no limit to this, but that we can set that up in a bit. Let's first start by just setting this up. So let's grab the pistol. Let's put the damage to five. The rifle with a damage of... Actually, let me put the pistol to seven, rifle to five, shotgun to 15 or something like that. That should be fine. And now we also need to make the layers so we can make a player self layer which will be ourselves or the local player and we can make an enemy player player oh actually let me not call them layer so let's go and what we can now just do is we can set them all to the enemy layer and we just say yes change children and then in the player controller let me just make a new materialized field private integer of type player self layer which in my case was seven as we can see here so i'm just going to set it to default of seven and then down here if we are the owner we now want to set the layer to this player self layer so we'll just go game object that layer equals to player self layer and we can also just do that for each of the child objects that we have transform child so we just loop through each of the child objects and we can do child that game object layer and there we go that should now set the player layer correctly so you can see that we have the player self layer of seven now and if we just go and play we should now see if we pick the player out here you can see it's set to player self layer and so should each of the child objects and now that another player joined you can see he is on the enemy layer and now hopefully when we shoot him it doesn't deal damage okay now we've got to figure out why that's not happening okay so let's go through from the beginning so if we go to the player weapon you can see when we hit the mouse we throw fire weapon fire weapon will grab the current weapon and call fire on it the fire will throw the animate weapon and will then ray cast out oh that's because we probably haven't set the weapon hit layers so let's go and do that player and the shotgun let's for that take just so the pistol will have the weapon hit layers of enemy player and default i think it's what we want we can maybe also hit the weapons on the ground so it's going to be the same for each one of them enemy layer ground weapon and default go default ground weapon enemy player there we go now let's go try again we still can't hit him hmm interesting try and figure out what's happening then so the layers are set now we can just start debugging which we can just do by saying debug.log it something and in here we can say debug.log it nothing this way we should be able to see at least where we end up inside whether we it doesn't count as we've hit anything or if it does count as we've hit something so let's try that one out so let's try and hit him so you can see it does say hit something which means that it does count as us hitting him so that means we do get past this check so the if statement up there works something's telling me that the take damage in here isn't working and i'm wondering why maybe it's because we're calling directly to a server rpc let me just try and make a actually let me try and keep this but make a non-server rpc and then make a server rpc down here that can just be private void take damage server where we then send the damage in let's test this one out so like so and this one can just be take damage server and damage. Let me try that instead. And it is still not working. Interesting. That is weird if we are hitting something, but it might be hitting something wrong though. Oh, that's probably because this has a capsule collider on it, the body. So let's try and do it here. Capsule collider on the actual player. Height is two and that should be one. There we go. So now the capsule collider is on the actual player. I think the character controller should hit it as well, but just for good measure. And I think we should be able to revert the changes we did with the RPC, but let's just try. So let's try and shoot the other player. And there you go. Now you can see that we're hitting him for damage. We're hitting him for seven with the pistol. Should be hitting him for five with the rifle. And we should be hitting him for 15 with the shotgun. And there we go. Now the player is dead. And the same thing should work the other way around. You should see if I shoot him here, it'll work just fine. There we go. And we should be able to go revert the player health changes that we did in here. That should not be needed. So just like that, like so. So that should work just fine. So now it actually works with us taking damage as well. And I think that should be about it for this video. Oh, and this damage is private. It should be public. And this should just work just fine. Let's just confirm once more to ensure that everything is working. In the next one, we can have the some kind of syncing animation thing shooting working. Yeah, so that's still working. So we can have, yeah, some kind of synchronizing of the, you know, shooting effects of particles, bullets landing and so on and try and synchronize all of that. And then in the video after that, we can look into having the enemy player actually die off when you shoot him to zero health. And then we can look into some basic UI components displaying your own health and so on. So let's just move from here. Hopefully you're learning some 
something for each video. And uh, yeah, I hope you like the format. I know it can be a bit of a mess, but a lot of people seem to voice the opinion that they really actually enjoyed watching the process of creating the code rather than just me already knowing the code prior. So hopefully this was helpful and uh, I just hope that you have a wonderful day.